Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how switches process frames. So we've already looked at in some other tutorials how the MAC address tables looked up, how switches learn MAC addresses. Well here we're going to look at how the switch internally processes a frame. And there are three approaches that a switch can take and we're going to look at each of those. We'll start with the store and forward method and we'll take a look then at the cut through method and finally at the fragment free method. These are all pretty academic discussions but they're good to know not only will they come up on the exam certifications but in terms of just understanding how a switch works this is really important information so let's get started. Store and forward that's the first method we'll look at. So here a switch receives the entire frame before it does anything else. That is the single most important characteristic to know about store and forward. So first we store it before we do anything else. And when it is, in, is received, the entire frame, then we perform the cyclic redundancy check. And that is to make sure that no errors have been introduced to this frame. You'll recall the frame check sequence is located in the trailer of the Ethernet frame. And so this then happens. The, the frame is checked for errors. Next, if it is determined to be error free, the switch will then look up the destination MAC address in the MAC address table. And then finally, it sends the frame on its way. So some pros to the store and forward method are you get to perform the entire CRC on the packet. So you're not propagating errored packets in the network. And that's pretty important. A con, though, is that some latency is introduced because you're waiting for the entire frame to show up and then you're, you're not doing anything until then and then you're running the CRC and then you're determining where to send it. So you introduce some lag. Now, even though that is a con, today, store and forward is generally the most common in the switch implementations you'll come across. The reason being is when you come across ports like one gigabit per second and higher, Everything is done in, in hardware, in ASICs or application specific integrated circuits. And so the latency that is introduced here is so negligible between this method and the other two methods we'll look at. But in theory, it's good to know that it does exist. But um, in a practical point of view, it's not the biggest deal. So let's take a look now at cut through. So the most distinguishing characteristic of the cut through method is that the switch can begin forwarding a frame as soon as it knows the destination MAC address. So it doesn't have to wait to receive the entire frame like what happens when a frame is received in the store and forward method. And the reason why this is possible is if you think back to an Ethernet frame, we know that the MAC address, the destination and the source are stored in the header. And not only that, but they're stored relatively close to the front of the header. So the, fr the switch is going to learn that information bef before it receives the rest of the, of the frame. So it can actually start looking up in the MAC address table based on that destination MAC address and determine where it needs to go before it even receives the entire frame. So what happens here is we actually, it's a lot faster. We cut down on some of that latency, right? We're not waiting for the entire thing to show up. And this is generally used when high performance computing is, is required on a network. But there's a problem. And the problem is, since we're not waiting for the entire frame to be received before we actually start forwarding it out. So really, I mean, keep in mind, part of the frame is actually being forwarded before the rest of it has even been received. And so we know, again, that the frame check suite sequence is located in the trailer, right? So I've already started to forward this frame out before I even had a chance to take a look at that value in the frame check sequence and determine if any errors have happened. So that's the problem. Errors could be propagated in, in frames. And, you know, that's not a good thing. So that's a major drawback to this particular method. Let's go ahead and look at the fragment free method now. So fragment free is, in a way, a compromise between store and forward and cut through. So with fragment free, we forward the frame only after we, we receive the first 64 bytes of it. So we don't have to wait for the whole thing, and yet we're not starting to forward it as soon as we learn the destination MAC address. We wait for the first 64 bytes. And that enables us to 
be a bit more proactive and determine if any errors have occurred on the frame. So there are less errors than the cut through method and generally speaking most errors occur in the first 64 bytes of a frame. So if we wait to receive that much, determine that it's okay, then we've significantly cut down the probability that this frame has any errors and so we're we're cutting down on some latency, not all, but yet we are taking more steps to reduce the chance of propagating frames that have errors in them. And this also helps us address late collisions. And a late collision is essentially a collision that happens where neither station is aware that it happened because it happened pretty late after a certain number of bits of the frame have already been transmitted and then the, the collision co occurs. Well, it's, it's a problem on networks and it's usually indicative of a hardware or a design problem on the network. And with the fragment free approach, we, we get a, a tool that helps us uh, combat, if you will, late collisions. So again, it's a compromise between the other two methods uh, with some pros and some cons. It's just right there in the middle. To summarize what we've gone over, we know there is the store and forward method where we are able to check the integrity and we don't do anything until we receive the entire frame, but we have some latency. We also talked about the cut through method where we don't check the integrity so we could propagate frames that have errors in them but we're doing this much faster now we're sending them faster so there's less latency and then finally the fragment free approach it's a compromise between the two where we wait for a certain amount of the frame to arrive before we decide to forward it and that enables us to check for any errors while still cutting down on some of the latency and that's it. There you have it. Those are the three approaches to how switches process frames internally. Thanks for watching.